Diana Patel, you are visiting the U.S. from India right now. You're touring across the U.S. You're uh, meeting people. You're also consulting. And you're also, I've heard that you've been here for a conference. So just starting this off, your institution has quite made it the news in India and elsewhere for a very unique concept of surrogacy that you brought through. So just beginning that, give us a little insight into exactly what is your institution doing and how did you get into this whole um, you know, process of being a doctor associated with surrogacy in India and everywhere else? Well, Aditi, I find that uh, infertility is really on a rise. The people do not understand the implications of late marriages and then having problems with the uterus. Or there are some unfortunate females who are born without uterus. And you know, like your instinct to survive, instinct to reproduce is very strong. And I felt that people do need this to complete their family, have a happy life. And there are surrogates in India who definitely want to help people from all over the world, giving them a baby. And so this is how I started my surrogacy arrangement and ran successfully delivering more than 1,300 babies for almost 44 countries in the world and India. How do you sort of combat the social taboos associated with this? And we did see your, you know, your speeches with TED Talks and such, where you've openly discussed the impact, the positive impact it's had on these surrogates. So talk to us a little bit about how this evolves in the society. Well, initially there was a lot of resistance. The society was not agreeable to it. The surrogates were not aware that how they will get pregnant, what is the IVF procedure. Right. So in my days, like a decade back, I had to literally fight for all this, creating an awareness among the couples, their families, as well as creating awareness among the surrogate women that this will be an IVF procedure and another embryo will be implanted in your uterus. You carry for nine months and hand it over just because this couple is unfortunate that they do not have a uterus to carry the baby or are not fit to carry. But then it's the whole arrangement went up so successfully because right. whatever little help the surrogates got financial compensation, they could help their family come up, educate their children and the infertile couples, they had their own babies and they would be really indebted to the surrogate and would right. consider her like their family member and even give them the honor and respect like a god. So I feel the initial days were tough, but the arrangement has been very well accepted by the Indian society and Indian surrogates. I would really like for you to give us a little insight into what happens during this process. This process is quite uh, intricate in terms of how it starts with the couple and when the surrogate is involved. So if you could just give our viewers a little brief insight into what exactly happens and what really is IVF? I feel like there's a lot of speculations about it in the, uh, you know, in the outside world, but I feel like a lot of the people, especially from the Indian community, and I'm sure you must agree with me, necessarily actually don't even know much about it. So give us a little insight into this. Yes, because most of the couples have children naturally. Exactly. A very small segment of group, the one in five is being infertile right now. So they are interested in infertility. Surrogacy starts with IVF because we have to basically first be an expert in IVF, do the best IVF procedure with the latest technologies like we have, the time-lapse imaging, the pre-implantation genetic screening of the embryos, and the high-tech lab. Because you can get a result in surrogacy if you do not have a good IVF lab and where you can get good blastocysts to implant in the surrogate. Right. Basically, the couple who need surrogacy is any female born without uterus, fibroids, tuberculosis, or she herself is having some cardiac or renal problem and cannot carry a baby, endometriosis, adenomyosis. So the, and when we identify this couple, the first thing starts with a legal advice where we have to tell them that these are the documents that they need to produce. Right. As of now, an Indian passport is a must. They should not have a foreign passport. When this is identified, we just look at their reports and find out the best IVF technique that we should apply to get the best practices. In the IVF procedure, the couple generally, the female starts with injections. Naturally, you produce one egg. We want okay. a cohort of 8 to 10 oocytes or eggs. So we give her injections for 9 to 10 days, then the trigger shot, and then remove the eggs vaginally after 36 hours, fertilize with the husband's sperm, and in 5 days, the blastocyst that is formed is then implanted in a surrogate lady who is simultaneously getting prepared to accept this embryo. And in two weeks' time, we get the result. 
As per the Indian guidelines, the birth certificate does not mention surrogacy. It has the names of the legal intended parents. Once the baby is born, then the, a baby is immediately handed over to the infertile couple. All legal contracts and documents are in place. Right. We the marriage certificate, their um, ID proof, and uh, their medical history that yes, genuinely we need surrogacy, and then we can start the procedure. And once the baby is born, they can apply for Indian passport and get the baby to whichever country they need to travel. Thank you so much for being with us on ITV Gold, Dr. Patel. Any last minute wishes or messages to all our ITV Gold viewers? Um, my message to all the viewers is that uh, be sympathetic towards the infertile couples. Infertility is not a disease. You have to just act proactively and definitely. There are ways and means where all patients will become parents eventually with lovely babies. And all the best and namaskar to all my Indian viewers.